Ooh, ooh, we, we've, got, we've got a fish here, Dr. Martin. Yeah? Is I think. Well, come over and take a look. Okay. There's the negative side. Oh, that's not too bad. Really dark matrix. Yeah, it's hard to hard to see it. Yeah. I like that. Well, go back, see if you can get a bird. Okay. All right. Well, that's, we, well, let's see. The birds ate the fish, didn't they? Right. That's okay. a good place. Well, well then we've Here's got the bird. food. We've got the bottom of the food chain going. Every clue is vital. Fossils are scarce. In 1984, Martin's hopes were raised by a stunning discovery. In the small town of Post, Texas, seven fossil bones were unearthed. The creature was dubbed Proto-Avis, or early bird. Proto-Avis is a great piece of evidence for my argument. Uh, it has a special type of articulation uh, for the jaw, which otherwise only found in birds. And if that's correctly interpreted, then I think you reasonably could argue that it's a bird. What's crucial is the age of Proto-Avis. It lived 225 million years ago, before true dinosaurs appeared. Proto-Avis supports Morton's theory, if he can prove it's a bird. Unfortunately, no feathers were found. Without feathers, Proto-Avis remains controversial. And Martin still faces the daunting task of finding a creature that mastered the air long before dinosaurs ruled the Earth. I think this means that both the insects and the fish are occurring very close to the shoreline. That's, that's what we're really counting on. I suspect these early birds could fly too well, so we don't expect them to get too far out to sea. We've found a place that's the right age. It's Jurassic, uh, a little older than the rocks that Archaeopteryx occur in, so it ought to have some new information on the question. The rocks are the right sort of environment to preserve very detailed information. If, the, if we find a skeleton of a bird here, we will find feathers with it, just like they find with the Archaeopteryx. And it's just a matter now of, of looking. and. I would greatly enjoy being able to present a bird from this unit to Bob Backer. And I think that probably it would serve my cause. I think it would prove my case. But proof may not lie in the earth. Clues may come from the realm of the bird, the air. Flight is the mark of a bird. Raptors moved at great speed, but could they have taken to the air? Is it possible? Could dinosaurs fly? Powered flight is no accident of evolution. It's a complex event. Flight demands that a creature have feathers to master the air. But first, those feathers need to get airborne. Did a dinosaur have the basic essentials to fly? Bob Bocker says yes. This is a baby raptor five days old. Well, it's an emu five days old, but a baby raptor would look a lot like this. There's an idea that feathers first evolved to insulate a chick. Not a bad idea. So if we could go back in time, maybe we'd see a baby Deinonychus with feathers and raptors had wrap-around fingers with sharp claws, so a, a raptor could climb with its hands. And raptors also had a back-grabbing toe behind the main toes, and it could grab bark with that toe, too. In other words, what a raptor could do is climb. Now, why is that important? Because birds fly. How did they fly? First, you've got to get the bird up in the tree. And to get the bird up in the tree, you've got to have climbing hands and climbing feet, and raptors had those. Once your bird is in the tree, it can begin experimenting. It can uh, put its arms out and try gliding. And once it's gliding, that's a short step to powered flight. It's not hard at all to see how flight in birds evolved from raptors in trees. But for Larry Martin, Deinonychus in a tree 
is a flight of fancy. Uh, this is a hawk, and you can see that its body is actually flattened like this. And if you look here at its feet, you can see that it has these very long recurved claws. And this claw right here, this toe, actually is turned in the opposite direction of the other toes. That's what's really meant by a uh, backward facing uh, claw. Now, I know that Dr. Backer has suggested that maybe some dinosaurs are like this, and that maybe even a dinosaur like Deinonychus may have been able to climb trees and perch on limbs. I only want to point out to you that Deinonychus and I are really just about the same size. If you're the, comfortable with the idea of my climbing a tree and perching on a limb, then perhaps you should believe Dr. Backer. I think you can immediately see that it's not very well designed to climb a tree. Can you imagine trying to climb a tree on your, on your tippy toes with your uh, arms and legs held straight like that? And this animal can't change that posture. Its arms and its legs are fixed like this, so it would have to climb a tree like so. Uh, once it's up in the tree and it jumps out, it's not shaped like, oh, say, this model of Archaeopteryx here. Not a very great model, but it makes a point. You notice it's flattened this way, so that when it's falling, it actually gives us a little lift from its body. You can imagine, you can imagine what would happen if this thing jumped out of the tree with its narrowly compressed body, it just falls straight down. And besides that, its arms are fixed in this posture. Birds have a different structural design. A wishbone extends from shoulder to shoulder, holding the ball and socket joints in place. This allows outward movement of the limbs so their wings can move up and down. If we took this velociraptor right here and tried to make a wing out of it, we might have to break the arm right off in order to do it. Can't do it with a velociraptor. They told me I could do it, however, with Godzilla. So we'll see. They told me wrong. <laughs> fixed bones, fixed ideas. Locked in opposition, Bakker and Martin continue their search. One for an ancient raptor. One for an ancient bird. But as divergent as their theories are, both cling to a fundamental tenet of evolution. At the root of the family tree lies a common, undeniable ancestor. Bob uh, Backer and I do agree on some things. Uh, we agree that the ancestry of birds is to be sought in the great group of reptiles called archosaurs. And we agree that birds are derived from something that most of us would call a reptile. An old assumption. But even that is under attack from a new technology. The dino bird debate is now entering the 21st century. London's Trafalgar Square is a gathering place for feeding birds, or dinosaurs, depending on who you believe. For Brian Gardner of King's College, there's no question. These are ancient raptors. A hundred million years later, and still not much comes between them and food. <laughs> 